Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 25th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, recording again from Jacksonville, Florida, but teaching virtually in London, England this week. Well, big news today from Apple. Apple again released updates for pretty much anything. And well, of course, uh, the big focus here is new functionality. With these updates come also important security patches. So on the desktop, I guess you would call it operating system side, we got updates for macOS Big Sur, Mojave, as well as Catalina. So uh, two versions back here. Then we got updates for iPadOS, iOS, tvOS, and watchOS. Of note is that there are three vulnerabilities being addressed here. Uh, actually, even in tvOS uh, that are currently already being exploited. And probably the most interesting one of these uh, vulnerabilities is uh, CVE 2021-3713. This impacts macOS Big Sur and it is a bypass of the Transparency Consent and Controller TCC framework, which is used to give permissions uh, to software to do sensitive things like, for example, taking screenshots. And with the release of the patch today, there's also a blog post by Yamf, the maker of enterprise management software for Apple devices. They have details about how a recent version of the XCS set malware took advantage of this vulnerability. Now, XCS set has been around at least since August last year. That's when Trend Micro wrote about it and various versions have been around since then. It targets Xcode projects. So again, something targeting developers and supply chain, and it took advantage of this vulnerability. So if you're interested in any additional details, how uh, this particular exploit worked and what the nature of the vulnerability is, I'll include a link uh, to the YAMF uh, blog post uh, with uh, the link uh, to the updates from Apple. And then we got a new set of Bluetooth vulnerabilities. CERT.org has a summary of work done by ANSSI and uh, the vulnerabilities really, there are a number of vulnerabilities here, but they sort of come down to the ability to impersonate a paired device. So an attacker could essentially add their own device instead of one that you already have paired, let's say with your phone. The CERT.org list uh, lists about 247, I believe, potential vulnerable vendors, six of which have already been identified as affected. And that includes, for example, Android, Cisco, Cradlepoint, Intel, Microchip Technology, and Red Hat. Uh, however, the vast majority of the vendors have not yet responded. So uh, take a look at the list and uh, I hope that more vendors will respond and state whether or not they are are vulnerable, but uh, with Android being uh, one of the vendors, it's certainly an important issue. Apple has not yet responded. Patches should be made available shortly by various vendors, so watch out for them and apply them. And if you're running Nagios uh, XI or Nagios uh, Fusion, it's also time for patching. Actually, the patches had been released a while ago, but uh, Samir Ghanem uh, now uh, published a blog post with details regarding 13 vulnerabilities reported to Nagios. Now, these vulnerabilities uh, cannot just compromise uh, the Nagios uh, server directly, but also devices that are monitored uh, by uh, this server, which of course could lead to a fairly widespread compromise. I don't think uh, Nagos should ever be exposed uh, anyway. So that's probably the first thing you wanna check and then, well, uh, definitely patch. The good news side of the story is that I didn't uh, see a simple unauthenticated code execution vulnerability. Uh, the code execution vulnerabilities all appear to require at least a low level uh, user account. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.